For this video, I don't even have to come up with any cooking analogies because we're gonna talk about pancake timeline editing. The reference is obvious. Seriously though, I thought this is something that we should spend extra time on because this technique, from a lack of a better name, is a game changer for those who haven't used it before. And for those who do use it, I want to go a bit deeper and really explain all the bells and whistles. Let's cook some pancakes, shall we? First, why do we actually call it pancake timelines? The reason is very simple. It's about stacking timelines on top of each other like American pancakes. But to be clear, the timelines can also be arranged in any other way. So for simplicity, pancake timelines are just two or more timelines visible in your workspace at the same moment that contain different pieces of the puzzle for an editor. An interesting thing is that in Poland we actually make very thin pancakes and we roll it and fold them with stuffing inside. Off topic, I know, but I thought it's interesting. I think that the name was promoted by a very inspiring editor, Vasiny Dumanski, but the concept is actually much older and comes from old hands-on editing days. So the examples of different timelines? You can have one with interview selects and another with b-roll that will accompany the story. You can have a timeline with a rough cut of a video and another one with ready-to-use motion graphic templates, logo animation, etc. You can have an edit you're working on for which you would like to use some clips from an archived project. You can open a sequence from that archived project next to it and reuse these clips. These are all examples of how and when pancake timelines can be used. I work that way all the time and there are no limits to the way you can implement that approach in your editing workflow. Well, obviously we'll use Premiere Pro again, but I know you can stack timelines in a similar way in DaVinci Resolve and probably in other analyses as well. So in Premiere Pro, we simply open another timeline and drag it in a workspace to a desired location. Now we can simply drag and drop clips between two or three or more sequences. If you just want a video or audio portion of a linked clip, simply deactivate the linked selection button and you're good to go. This is the most intuitive, but also the most basic way to use pancake timelines. But we can do much more. Not many people realize that we can open any sequence in the source monitor panel. This way we can insert and overwrite part of a timeline to another sequence. To do it, right click a sequence in a project panel and choose open in source monitor. Next, open source monitor settings, which is this wrench icon, and select open sequence in timeline. Now, instead of a clip, we have a sequence active in a source monitor panel, which we can move next to a program panel if we want to. By the way, the fact that the timeline is active in a source monitor is indicated by the playhead, which became red instead of standard blue color for a sequence in the program panel. Just like with clips active in source monitor panel, we can add in and out points for our sequence and use insert and overwrite commands. And this is where it may become a bit complicated or tricky. This section is Premiere Pro specific, so if you're from another NLE universe, explore what possibilities of stacking timelines your NLE gives, focus on that and jump to another lesson. So let's analyze how insert and overwrite work in case of singular clip opened in the source monitor panel. Once we have in and out points, we can use insert and overwrite command and the clip will land on tracks that have source patching activated. So to modify where that clip will land, simply change source patching settings in the first column of the timeline panel. For a sequence opened in the source panel, it may be a bit more advanced as we may have several audio and video clips that we want to bring to another timeline. In case you have the first timeline button activated, all clips will come in as nested sequences. So this case is quite similar to a singular clip. If you want the video part on V5 and the audio part on A6, you just activate source patching for them and you're done. But nested sequences are not always what we want. In such a case, we need to turn that button off and the situation is a bit more out of control at first glance. But basically, once we select the source timeline, we can see where clips from specific tracks will land on in our destination timeline. So we just need to move these around and possibly even skip tracks we don't care about. How cool is that? Let's say that I just want clips from V1, V2 and V4 
to be imported to the destination timeline. By the way, always make sure that the right sequence is selected in the project panel. This is very important. Even if you have the source timeline active in the view, but in the project panel you have selected another clip or sequence, the whole operation will not work as expected. This is a very simple thing that you need to keep track of, that is causing a lot of headache for many editors and discourage them from using pancake timelines in this powerful way. I don't want it to happen to you. I will deactivate all other tracks for my destination timeline and will move the remaining ones to the tracks I want them to end up on. Now I just need to hit the period on the keyboard and the override command is completed. I strongly encourage you to try it on your own. You will love it, I promise. The same way of working with source and destination timeline can be used on a sequence opened from another project using the media browser panel. This is called dynamic sequence and the same rules apply. The only difference is that the sequence will be opened as a source timeline by default. So you don't even have to use the open in timeline command for a sequence, which we had to do for a sequence from a working project. Now, a few helpful tips that can elevate your pancake timeline skills. If you have too many timelines open in the panel group, you can click on a timeline panel menu and there will be an option to close other timeline panels except the active one. You can cycle between sequences open in the source monitor panel with Shift plus 2 shortcut. Obviously, you can map it to a different key combination if you want to. Shift plus 3, on the other hand, cycles between all open timelines. X marks in and out point for a clip under the playhead, and as we already covered in one of the previous lessons, forward slash marks in and out point for any selected group of clips. Talking about in and out points, it's worth mentioning that we can create J cuts and L cuts using insert override commands. We just need to split in and out points for a source timeline by holding Alt on the keyboard and adjust any of them. And lastly, since the introduction of productions in Premiere Pro, we can actually have multiple timelines from different projects open and active at the same time. So in my opinion, that makes pancake editing even more superior and for some workflows, it can be very useful. I'm keen to explore how it can streamline the editing process even more. Who knows, maybe I'll add a lesson to this course specifically about using pancake timelines with productions one day. That's it for pancake timelines. But there are more tips that can be potentially very useful in a lot of people's workflows. Let's dig deeper in the next lesson.